there was no correlation at all between the best players, players who played play the championship, and the players who done this year. So it doesn't tell you how good a player is, it just tells you how well they move. And the higher this score, the more likely you are to have them for the championship. So the score for the test is, if they have any pain during the test, they score zero. If they can do the test perfectly, they score three. If they can start and finish the test without cheating, they score, or if, sorry, if they can start and finish the test and cheat slightly, they get a two. But if they can't finish the test, they get a one. So three is normal. Three is not this super athlete like you say both. Three is just normal movement. Two is that there's some dysfunction that they can't get a three. And one is really, really poor. So we've got some videos here that Peter and Paul took earlier. So this is an example of somebody doing a squat really well. So the squat's really good because it assesses the mobility of your hips, your back, your shoulders, your knees, your ankles. It gives you a really quick indication of, of how somebody moves through all of their joints from head to toe. So what we're looking for here is symmetry. Can that player keep his hips between his knees equally, equal weight on both legs? And can he get his hips down at least to level with, with his knees? And can he keep that pole right above his head? If you imagine that he was lifting an Olympic bar and there was weight in that pole, you want it directly above your head. Too far forward or too far back and you're going to fall over. So in a second here, should turn to the side and we'll get a view from the side. So he's pretty good. He's under 14. Yeah. Yeah. He's only Paris one three. Okay. So you can see from that toddler who was two or three, that's the position they're going into to pick that toy up off, off the floor. So if this is only an Alton player at 14 years of age and scored a three, then something's happened for him to, to detrain you know, between those ages. Too much sitting. That's good. Enough. Our lifestyle of what we're doing, too much sitting. Uh, and not enough physical activity and then when we do the physical activity we don't have the strength and the mobility and the flexibility and the coordination to do well. So then this is somebody who you see the knee starting to, to buckle in and move out, not getting as much depth, you can see he just looks tighter around his hips, around his calves, again knees wobbling. If he's doing that with two feet you can imagine what he's like if he jumps and lands on one leg or goes to twist and turn off one leg and that knee's moving there, he's a really high risk for knee injury. So not getting the depth, the pole's coming forward, really tight through his flexor, so his trunk is coming forward as well. So this is out of 21. So this is the Anthem under 14 and Harden scores and Jewel scores from this year. 12.1, 13.0, 13.2. Uh, the Anthem under 17 score was 14.2. I'm not going to stand up here and tell you everything's rosy and thrown and we're doing things brilliantly because when we start from exactly the same point as you, our average for our, for our 14 is 13.5, so we're getting exactly the same type of athletes in at 14. We're, you know, we're not, you know, there's very few UC goals in, in Toronto, so we're starting with the same players at 14. Uh, but we've been doing this stuff now for three years and now our minor average is, is up to 17.46 and our under 17 uh, average in Antrim is 4.2. Where is improvement coming? Is it coming through the school? Is it coming through clubs? Is it coming through the development squads themselves? Where, where, is, where, do, you, where do you see that improvement? The, the, over the last two years... better education? It's better education. Our coaches are more aware of it. But we, ha we started off 12 interns three years ago. We're down probably to about five or six through, through dropout. This is, it takes a lot of equipment. <coughs> our, our interns go into schools and they work with the schools and they do this stuff work in schools and we then uh, try to educate the school coaches. Now, probably 50% of our schools are, do this stuff really, really well and implement all the right coaching. 50% of our schools still run the crap out of our players and don't do this stuff. Uh, but we're, we're getting there, we're winning compared to where we were three years ago. We're a lot better place. It is happening more, there's more and more uh, clubs doing this. Uh, and at, at development sport level, we're, we're doing this, but we've got we've got a very big county, and we've got a lot of players, and we've got a lot of development sport players, and it's hard to do this really well with having such a, a big. You know, there's one theory within the county that taking as many players as you can, and we'll have more to choose from at minor level. 
but again it spreads your resources really thinly there's our theory that if you really focus on the really really good ones you can do this stuff really really well but then you might miss some and it, it's hard but what we've done over the last three years hasn't been perfect by no means but we are having some effect but unless you implement things at club school and county you're not going to get anywhere so it has to be all three and uh, 18 months ago myself the academy director the coaching officer and the, and the games that officer rolled out and we we met clubs in, re, in regions five or six in each and we told them everything was happening at the balance squad level everything ha happened at county minor level to try and get their buy-in uh, to try and do stuff at underage level and there was lots of things we've done and i'll talk a wee bit about it in a second but we stopped county minors from training at club level and like that was a uh, that was tough to get that through at the start but when they seen what we were doing and they realised they were going to get the player back fit and healthy rather than broken then they bought into it and they were going to send them back a better player so it, it takes a change of mindset definitely because everybody wants their best players to with them but there's lots and lots of things that we've done some of it worked, some of it didn't work some of it worked really well, some, some of it didn't work so well but uh, you have to touch all three bases club, school and county because especially the school, they have so much power over the players. If you had a development squad session any morning, you, know, you might have 20% of your players don't turn up. Everybody turns up for school because they're getting in trouble, they're in detention. So everybody turns up for the school stuff. So that's where you need to really focus in on because that's what we've found is we do our best work through through the schools. Peter, do you find the same? Aye. Yeah. Marty, you mentioned the word intern. Now, is that, is that from Georgetown or those physio No, no, the, no, the, our interns, are sports science graduates or uh, personal trainers who want to become strength and conditioning coaches right. and we have paid for their strength and conditioning qualification right. over the last few years and in return they uh, coach our players. So, so Tyrone have invested then in strength and conditioning uh, graduates mm -hmm. that have fed back into Tyrone for that. So they don't get paid. They, we pay for their course yes, and yeah. they, they their payment losses they coach the players. Is, is that something that Antrim are doing? Yeah. Uh, I, but I think you know that's yeah. that's one of the key the key things I just picked up from what you're saying. But there's very few counties yeah. doing that. Yeah. You know, Calvin or spearheaded that a few years ago to go in and invest in their coaches. But we're catching up with them with. Uh, so <coughs> this is what it should look like, and this is what it does look like for our elite players. I'm just talking about elite players here. I'm not talking about club level. This is this is the, your county mayor's county under 21s. So you a really narrow base here. Then we, we're doing more and more strength work, and then you have these highly skilled players, the talented minors that can come straight out of the county senior team, but don't have the other attributes to back that up. You know, so maybe can, skillful enough play county senior at 19, but by 21 they're, they're broke. Uh, and what we need to do is widen this, the base of this pyramid. But uh, you have to start somewhere. And in 2011, this is our county minor average. So uh, we've seen there what the Antrim is, <coughs> Antrim under, under 17 averages. In 2011 when we started this, our average was exactly the same. So there was no difference between our 14s or 7s or 18s. In actual fact, uh, in our very first year, our under 14s were better than our 15s. Our, our fifth, our, uh, sorry, our 18s were worse than our 17s. Our 17s were worse than our 16s. Our 16s worse than 15s, and 15s worse than 14s. So our players are getting worse as they went along, not better. But we've turned that around by the stuff that we've, we've been implementing. And in 2012, our average was up to 15, and then in 2013, it was up to 17.46. So that's from the work that we've done. So you can change this over a two or three year period. If, uh, by implementing the right structures. So what that translated to was uh, injury rates are, are often published in, in uh, comparison to how many thousand hours you train or play. So in 2011, for every thousand hours that our minors were training or playing, we had 6.5 injuries. In 2012, 2.7, and last year with 1.1. Uh, that those figures may be difficult to take in. So. What that looks like was in 2011, I uh, became the minor physical along with, with, uh, with Mickey Donnelly, took charge of the minors. It was the first year of the age group with 44 training sessions, 10 games, with 54 sessions, with 30 players, with 25 injuries. 
So it was nearly one injury per player for that season, and 15 of those was happened at County Trail. Uh, so we were sending players back to clubs injured, uh, and we were beat. We had a really talented squad. They, we took over this team and they just won the Iron Manor title. We were five or six back next year, favourites to win Ulster, and we completely flopped in the league. We didn't qualify for the the uh, top competition of the Ulster League, and we were beaten by Calvin in the Ulster semi final. So we really looked at what we were doing. We implemented injury prevention and warm ups, which we we'll talk about. Uh, we've done more and more strength and conditioning, we've done more of this functional movement work, more flexibility. And in 2012, 62 training sessions and 16 games. So we had 78 sessions in total. We gained 30 players, but with 13 injuries. So we halved our injury rate in one season. And we only had seven then with the county. Uh, and we went, then that translated into success. So we didn't have as talented as the team, but we went on beating the Ulster League in Championship. In 2013, probably, if you'd ask our development squad coaches, <coughs> that was the weakest team we had in, the, in that three year group, by uh, that three year group over that. Uh, three year period, but we got the all Ireland final. We had 88 training sessions in 14 games. The season ran from February to September. With 30 players, we had only 10 injuries, and of those 10 injuries, only four of them happened at county minor training or county minor matches. The other six happened at club matches because we didn't allow them to train with their, with their clubs. So, what we looked at was the five components of, of fitness, and we felt that. We were getting all this through games. You know, uh, if you're playing, some of our county minors have to play 30 games in a 90 day period, and they're on up to our first game for the for the Ulster Championship. This time of the year is hectic for the trio, being club league, a county league, Macquarie Cup, educational schools. It's 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 mad. And if we try to do any more endurance work with them in that period of time, we'll just break them. So we don't do any physical training. It's all coaching and. We were on the pitch for a maximum of 60 minutes, and that includes a 15 minute warm up. Uh, so we done very little of this in training, and we tried to do much more of this here. And then, whenever we got out of that hectic period of those 30 games, we started to do more of the speed and agility work. Uh, but it's a gamble, we had to get over the first first round uh, of the championship against the Ringo. So that's traditionally what you know, football in Portland. Maybe not so much for them, but definitely get like, football what our fitness model looks like. Massive amounts of endurance work, <coughs> very little of everything else. So, you know, if we look at five components of fitness, we definitely need to try and, and address that. Uh, because if you just keep doing that, all that endurance work and all that load with those players that don't move very well, then we're, we're going to break them. But to successfully train, you need to overload your players. So you need to, to get fitter, to get faster, you need to do more and more stuff. But you need to be careful how you do that. So if, if you're going through a heavy training phase or heavy competition phase, the players will feel tight, tired, and sore, and the performance will decrease for a certain time. But if you give them enough time to recover, they'll, get, they'll adapt and they're import, uh, they'll improve the performance. So whatever you're working on, whether it's endurance or strength, whatever you're trying to work on in that period, if you train hard, get enough recovery, you'll, you'll improve. And that's well known uh, through a super compensation principle. So that looks like in a graph here is if you train at this point on a Monday and you rest Tuesday, you train Wednesday, back up, give some more rest, train again, over a period of time, your performance, your fitness level goes up and up and up. If you try to do something every day, you never get that adaption, you never get that recovery time to adapt. And over a period of time, you're, you, you know, instead of getting better, faster, stronger, fitter, your, your fitness just declines more and more and more. So that recovery time is, is crucial. But where do you get that recovery time? Now, this is what our county minor diaries looked like two years ago. So Sunday, you know, not all our players come from the Dremores and the Ariels and the Clydells and the Clones or the teams that are winning senior championships that don't need club minors. You know, probably 70 80 percent of our clubs or our players at county minor level are coming from Division Two, Division Three clubs who play for their club seniors. So they all have played club seniors on Sunday. Monday the county training, Tuesday the club training, Wednesday the club, uh, club minor game for their, uh, their clubs, Thursday the county minor training, Friday they're back with their clubs, Saturday they have an Ulster League match with their own, and then Sunday again they're back into their club match for the seniors. So there's nowhere in that 
uh, diary for that adoption. Then you throw in schools, throw in all our sports, dual players, and that just gets gets crazy. So then you get these players that, that are being, being overtrained. And if, if you're a top player, if you're an elite player, the, the very I've met very few top players who are bluffers. Man, you know, managers always say to me, oh, he's, hey, he's saying, saying he's going hamstring there, I just think he's bluffing. When these lads get to that level, there's very few them get that level from being bluffing and missing training sessions unless they're genuinely hurt. The vast, vast majority of players I come across are very genuine. So this slide here just shows you what those symptoms of overtraining are. You have to look out for it. Because if, if you have a top minor in your club and you think he's always injured and you think he's bluffing or putting it on, it's probably not. It's probably genuine in my, in, uh, my experience of working with these players. So, here, you have that presentation, you know, it would be a good idea, even with just this one slide, print it out, stick it up in your club rooms. If you get those top players, just have a look, and anything there, you see on that list, they need rest, and they need, need to be able to that, because uh, they'll just drop out. They either physically break down, or mentally they'll just give up on sport, and they'll drop out.